Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Five Spanish reds in front of me. Uh, Tempranillo is the dominant grape, and I think it's the exclusive grape in some of them, but I think some of the others have got little bits of other things in there. Um, three Riocas, one from uh, Toledo, south of Madrid, and uh, a Ribera del Duero to finish. Have I got them in the right order? Only one way to find out. Let's dig in. First one, uh, Baronia Rioja Colección Baronia Tempranillo 2010 Elaboración Especial. I don't know what's special about the uh, uh, and the um, bringing up the elevation, the aging here, but uh, doesn't really say much on the back label. I'll just dig in. Well, it has got uh, the imprint of oak here. There's uh, like a smoky bacon character. Uh, maybe a bit on the overdone smoky bacon character in that oak. I'm just one wondering whether uh, they've charred it that little bit too much. Uh, but then behind that, uh, this is quite gentle fruit. Um, sometimes I get uh, orange peel character in Rioja and also get it in Syrah as well, but uh, that's another matter. But I get that, that character here. feels like there's a youthful freshness here. doesn't feel like it's been uh, overaged in oak, but I just wish that maybe there was a little bit more, uh, a, a less charring on some of that oak. Well, I don't know what the unique winemaking process that they've, they've done here is, uh, but they've actually done a quite a nice job of it. I mean, the, uh, the, the, oak, the oak aromas uh, do, uh, that, 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 that character, that slightly toasty character, does come in there. But there's also, it also feels like they've uh, left the, the wine in those barrels long enough to soften slightly. It's still quite a young, vigorous wine, 2010, two years old. But... Um, uh, there's a bounce and a vibrancy about the fruit, and the fruit is fresh. It's got this uh, uh, the, yeah, red berries, that touch of orange peel, the herbs, the spice, and um, I like it. I've got a feeling that I'm going to like it even more if I were to try it this time tomorrow. There's just what I call a slightly green edge, a greener, earthy edge, ever so slightly dank in a good way, if that makes sense. Uh, and I've got a feeling that as the fruit gets more and more, uh, comes out of its shell more, that will meld in with this, uh, with this, this slight earthiness and uh, make a more satisfying fine drink. Good now, better tomorrow. But nice way to begin. Wine number two. Uh, it's the Wine Society, Rioja Criantha, made for them by Bodegas Palacio, uh, 2008. Give it a whirl. Soft, gentle, mellow, aged character. Uh, there's a slight toffee uh, note from, uh, from, from the oak aging. It's, it's like the vanilla toffee character. Uh, the fruit behind, uh, it's just like, it, it feels like it's just gone, ah, oh relaxed into its bottle and uh, uh, so I, I may I like the freshness of the first one I like the aged character of this one I'll see whether I prefer this when I taste it fresh juicy spicy perfect midweek sausage wine um, not hugely concentrated I think there's more concentration in the one before uh, but what is good about it is it's not trying too hard it's not too in your face uh, but yeah, I'd love to see the uh, the first one at, uh, with an extra two years in bottle because I think it's got it's got a bit more concentration in that. Uh, but here uh, it's a, it's a really nice drink. You, know, you, you wouldn't um, if someone poured you some of that, you wouldn't say no to a second glass. Wine number three, uh, still in Rioja, and this is Cunet's uh, Imperial Reserva 2004. This has also got that, that lovely, uh, gentle vanilla, uh, strawberry, raspberry, orange peel, the aged character, the herbs, the spice, and um, it feels like it's going to be a more, a, a more gutsy, uh, concentrated wine than both of the two that have gone before. Uh, and it smells, it smells pretty good. Yeah, lovely, rich, juicy, earthy, aged, um, fleshiness, uh, sweetness of uh, oak, that touch of coconut. Um, and uh, but there's still a real vigour to the fruit, and uh, I do like that. Um, I mean, they're, 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 I think that there are, there are wines that will have a bit more fruit concentration than that. Maybe if I've got a problem with it, the finish is just a little bit too dry, but um, I would uh, very happily dig into uh, a large haunch of... Uh, uh, can you have a haunch of roast lamb? Anyway, I'd like to tuck into something, a big piece of that melt, on, melt and fall off the bone, bone uh, lamb that you get in parts of Spain. Very tasty. Uh, so, yeah, uh, wine number four. It, this is the one from Toledo. Uh, Finca Constancia, and it's their Parcella 23. Uh, what's... Ventitris. Um, and Tempranillo 2010, single vineyard. Uh, and, um, I mean, this and Baronia and the last one, they, they're all part of the... Uh, Gon Gonzalez Bias, known for their sherries, but I think uh, uh, these three, um, yeah, they're table wines, so uh, no sherry input into them at all. 
Now this is a much more regular, um, sweet, fruity wine, black currant jam. It really is strong black currant and uh, and, and I, I don't, uh, fresh jam, does that sound strange? What I don't get here, uh, that I do get in some wines that are jamming, is that baked edge where it feels like the fruit has started to raisin and shrivel up. Here it feels like the fruit is ripe, but um, it's, it's that cooked ripe fruit rather than cooked shriveled ripe fruit. It smells good, I think um, it, it's a bit louder probably than the Riocas, but maybe not as subtle. Just keeps the right side of the medicinal. Um, it is it, it, it is a warm, ri rich, round, full-blooded wine, um, and as I was expecting, not too subtle. But can't fault it for its honesty and depth of flavour. Uh, personally, I, uh, I I prefer some of the Riocas, but um, uh, if you like a certain style of uh, uh, of South Australian Shiraz, then you will hoover that up and uh, go bring me more. Let's finish uh, with Ribera del Duero. So this is Mata Romera, uh, Crianza, 2008. And um, same alcohol as the one before, 14.5%. Well, this is a brooding, feral beast. Um, some Ribera del Duero can be um, a, a bit too macho for its own good. Here, um, it's, um, it feels like it's been made by somebody who's um, uh, got a, a more old-fashioned approach to élevage. Uh, there is a slight earthiness and dankness about, uh, uh, about the oak here. And uh, there's also, for me, a touch of Britannomyces. Uh, but there's this really nice, rounded, rich meatiness uh, in the middle. Uh, I'll be interested to find out, uh, when I come to taste it, whether all those elements of élevage take over from uh, the fruit that was there in the first place, or uh, whether the fruit wins out. Let's have a go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I find that that savoury Britannomyces edge, um, if you don't know what Brett is, I'll, I'll, put, I'll flash up a link and you go and follow that and find out more about it. Uh, but a little bit of it, it adds a bit of savoury interest to a wine, a little bit more, and it starts eating away at the um, uh, the more uh, the high notes, if you want, in the, in the, in the musical scale of the wine, uh, and adds this dryness to it. So here, uh, the impression that you get is of, of, of a slightly dried out, slightly Slightly raisiny uh, character coming through. Uh, it, it's um, I'm not sure how it's going to progress. Sometimes I find with Bretty wines is that that, that Brett level stays constant and the wine uh, grows and gets past the Brett and you don't, suddenly don't notice it. So I will keep an eye on that. Um, but um, for the moment, that is my criticism of it. I'm uh, I, I'll be interested to see how it develops. I'm not holding out much hope for it, but uh, uh, I'll be tasting it later with a group of people, and uh, it, it, it will be a good thing to, uh, to to be able to show them what, uh, what the influence of Brett and how uh, uh, how it can uh, how can, how it can affect a wine. Favourite of these was the the Cune, I think. Uh, so uh, maybe before I go and visit those people, I'll see if I can find some lamb and uh, maybe have a glass or two of that with it. See you soon. Mm -hmm.